Hamas had a premeditated plan to use sexual violence as a weapon of war, an Israeli women's rights campaigner and lawyer has said. Professor Ruth Halperin Kadari said she saw footage of women in several locations whose condition left her in no doubt that they had been raped. There has been anger over the delay of some UN bodies to acknowledge claims of Hamas's sexual atrocities on 7 October. Israel has been exploring evidence of sexual crimes during the attacks. The scale of sexual violence carried out by Hamas during the October attacks is not yet clear, but Israeli police say they have so far gathered more than 1,500 testimonies from witnesses and medics. Pictures and live footage streamed by the militants pointed to the gruesome nature of the attacks at the Supernova Festival. A range of violence from gang rape to the sexual mutilation of murdered victims are being investigated by police. I saw a number of first-hand, eyewitness accounts, for example of one survivor who hid in the bushes and saw a woman next to her being raped by several men, Professor Halperin Kadari told BBC Radio 4's Today program. She said she also spoke to a paramedic who treated a woman who lost a life-threatening amount of blood after reporting being raped by four men. I saw footage and pictures from numerous locations of bodies whose condition were all exhibiting the same pattern of mutilation and leaving no doubt that rape was performed on these women before they were executed, she said. This leaves no doubt that such a concentration of cases in a relatively short span of time, less than a day in numerous locations, it could not have been unless there had there not been a plan, premeditation, to use sexual violence as a weapon of war. Hamas denies these abuses. In a post on the messaging app Telegram, it said that such claims were lies by Israel that sought to distort the humane way Hamas has treated Israeli hostages. Israeli women's rights and legal activists had been calling on key international organizations to publicly acknowledge reports of gender-based violence, including sexual violence, in the wake of Hamas's attacks. Professor Halperin Kadari, who spent 12 years as a member of a UN Convention on Discrimination Against Women, said she and others have been calling on UN bodies to acknowledge these crimes against humanity. Regrettably, until a week ago, None of them said the explicit word sexual violence. It took them more than seven weeks, she said. The UN has yet to respond to accusations of a delay, but Professor Halperin Kadari visited the UN in Geneva just a week ago to draw attention to the violence. UN women issued a statement, eight weeks after the attacks, acknowledging accounts of gender-based atrocities. This took them too long, much too long. Professor Halperin Kadari added, Yale Shearer from the Survivors of Sexual Violence Advocacy Group told today that men were also victims of sexual violence on 7 October. She said evidence is being gathered from some survivors of the attacks, as well as eyewitnesses and first responders, who have been detailing the violence. Hamas terrorists made sure to disgrace these people and dishonor them in many ways she said. This included violence carried out on the victims' bodies after they had died, Ems Shearer added. We also saw people who were bleeding, and, people who were tied down to furniture with zip ties, and were not clothed, of many ages. An ongoing UN commission of inquiry investigating alleged war crimes on both sides of the Israel-Hamas conflict will include a focus on sexual violence carried out during the attacks on 7 October. However, Israel has not so far cooperated with the commission, viewing it as biased. Navi Pill, who chairs the inquiry, said if Tel Aviv did not want to cooperate, her team could still take evidence from survivors and witnesses outside the country. All they, Israel, have to do is let us in, she told the BBC, adding that survivors of the attacks should be able to get a UN hearing. Ems Pill also rejected claims that the UN delayed acknowledging that sexual violence had taken place during Hamas's attacks and said every effort was being made as part of her team's investigations. The Hamas attack on Israel on 7 October killed 1,200 people, with around 240 others taken hostage. Since then, Gaza's Hamas-run health ministry says more than 15,500 people have been killed in Israel's military campaign which it launched in response 